multifamily is, so <laughs> I'll give you some background. So this is back in the day. I got started this business in 2007, 2008 with, then I was trying to sell office buildings and emphasis on the word trying. It was a lot, a lot of work, not a lot of actual selling. And somebody smart said, Joe, why don't you sell, try selling some apartment buildings? This was in 2009, I guess. So I said, like, okay, I gave it a shot. Welcome to Real Estate Hustlers Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Appleman, founder and CEO of Appleman Capital. Today we're, jo we're joined with Joe LaFleur. Joe's a multifamily advisor at 100units.com, specializes in Central Florida, closing 150 plus deals worth around $200 million. Expert multifamily investments. Joe, we're excited to have you on the show today. If you could let the listeners know a little bit more about yourself. Absolutely. So my world, I've been doing this for, I don't know, going on 15 years. I am the 7-Eleven of multifamily deals, five to 150 units here in Central Florida. I've been doing that for a long time. We are 365. That's all we do is small multifamily deals. These are non-institutional, private owner. And we're, those are the buyers and the sellers of these assets. They're all high net worth individuals and or syndications. And I've been doing that for a long time. So that's it. Uh, give me an idea. So in, the, in Orange County, right where we're located, so far in 2024, we have a 32% market share for broker deals, just to give you some kind of background. And we've closed over half a billion dollars in transactions over that time frame. Nice. Let's get, what is a, a, a non-institutional size? Like break that down for us. So that the so my world know. is five to 150 unit deals. So apartment buildings that are in that range. So that's where I came up with the cool hundred units. That's a nice round number right in the center of what we do. That's cool. That's uh, that's great. So tell us, um, tell us about how you got started in the uh, the multifamily space and specifically of, of what you do. So multifamily is so <laughs> I'll give you some background. So this is back in the day. I got started this business in 2007, 2008 with then I was trying to sell office buildings and emphasis on the word trying. It was a lot, a lot of work, not a lot of actual selling. And somebody smart said, Joe, why don't you sell, try selling some apartment buildings? This was in 2009, I guess. So I said, like, okay, I gave it a shot. I was like, well, it's not that complicated. There's, you know, 20 boxes. They pay 500 bucks a month back then. I'm like, all right, well, let's figure this out. So I started selling apartment and I actually sold a couple. And I was like, well, psh, selling stuff is better than not selling stuff. And I've been doing it ever since. Yeah, that's uh, well, it keeps, keeps the lights on too, for sure. Um, Florida. I mean, that, that, the market's blowing up. It continues to, to skyrocket. And you're in Central Florida. So tell us, tell us a little bit about uh, about what you're seeing down there and uh, and where you think things are heading. So it is definitely exploding. We've got population growth over three x the national average here in Central Florida markets. Job growth two x the national average, and that's that has been a continuing trend, uh, basically for the last since 2019. One of the interesting things that has come along with that is here in Central Florida, we've also had a tremendous amount of supply. We've had we've been in the top 10 markets for supply, new supply coming online versus existing supply. So in two years, give or take over the last 12 months, we've had about four and a half percent of the existing supply, which is 200 and 20 ish thousand units currently we brought online and we've got another about 4% coming online. So another just over 10,000 units coming online over the next 12 months, which of course, as you know, supply and demand, even though we have incredible demand, that amount of supply in any one market has added softness. So we've seen softness in the market on the rental side in the last 12 months, and that is likely to continue with into 20 midpoint of 2025. Right now, we actually had negative rent growth from Q3 of 2023 on we're expecting that to continue into Q3 of 2024, where we're actually going zero and then we should be hitting positive just a smidge come Q4 2024. Uh, the reason I bring up rent growth, a lot of people look at price per unit, price per door. The driver for multifamily properties is rent. That is the number one. If you walk away with nothing else after listening to this podcast, get the rent right, everything else works. Yeah. So you that's why that's, I do a big focus on supply, demand, and rent growth. 
that's top line revenue is everything. It uh, it's a sink or swim, and uh, rent pricing is uh, especially with cap rates. I mean, if you're purchasing uh, still in the fives, I'm assuming you you've got to have your rent your rent at the right price. Um, yeah. So you're seeing absorption. I'd say not necessarily absorption absorption issues, but it's to be expected when you're when you're bringing on that many. You bring on that. a supply north of like give or take. We brought on the expectation is over ten percent units to come online that's a lot of absorption you got to have yeah then your normalized vacancy goes up too i mean that that just goes along with it and then um it, do you think uh, owners of uh, of of the properties are, are now just putting their, their properties online to, to now they see kind of the explosion of florida so you're seeing a lot more other units other properties that wouldn't have been sold now coming online to be sold at say the top of the market too to Don't give you an idea, so transaction velocity is down 65 to 70 percent across the Florida markets. So now this is coming off of 2021 and 2022, which were record breaking transaction years. Yeah. Basically, we did the same number of transactions in those two years that we would do typically in a decade. So we've seen not only you had on one end, if you were in the market, doing well you saw transactions basically sucked forward because 2023 i actually i would say from q2 2022 on all of q20 uh, all of 23 you've seen the transaction velocities just collapse i mean to give you an idea so in 2023 transaction velocity from 2022 to 2023 q1 and q2 were down 85 percent so there was a huge drop off, but it's because you sucked forward a bunch of transactions that normally would not have occurred. And then 2023, you had a crazy run up where you had every 30 days, interest rates were moving in a positive direction. You also had for Florida specifically, insurance costs moving up quickly along that exact same time frame. And we were starting to see supply coming online. So you started to see some degradation just the beginnings of a hint of it in the rent. We no longer had that strong rent growth. 2020, 2021, and 2022 were all double digit rent growth years. 2023, we started to see that drop down 8% and then boom, it started turning negative. So we had some really wild market there. Um, what is happening currently? The people who are choosing to sell, they are doing so for strategic reasons. Either they have, like in my, the space I play in, the vast majority of owners buy and sell based on factors that are outside of the asset. And that's something a lot of people think that the only thing in the world of apartment buildings is because of the property. And in my world, that is not accurate. People buy and sell real estate based on how that asset fits into their life. So they may have some issue retirement. They may have some issue they want to move. They may have some other thing they want to purchase. They may have some certain estate planning they want to do. All of those things affect why they would choose to buy or sell a real estate. So, and, and that's that's the uh, the seller demographic of what you're you're alluding to is the uh, the owner, the direct owner operator, the mom and pop. Is that yep. right? That's, Got it. That's probably that, thirty five percent of my business. And that's 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 a great niche to be in because you're you're helping them, you're underwriting the deal, telling them what what's achievable in the market. And uh, have you seen any uh, recourse from groups over over uh, paying for properties, and then the insurance cost kicks in, and now the, the properties are being taken back? What does that look like? That for my so I've looked around for that. I have heard a whole lot about it, but if you ask me to find a seller that's in distress. I have a very difficult time doing that. And the ones that I have talked to who are in situations, they have started looking at selling it. Mostly they did it about six to nine months ago. And during that time frame, based on the offers that were coming in, since they couldn't get any of their equity back out, they were basically not making enough money with it. They went back to the lender, showed them the offers, and the lender just kicked the can down the road. That has been the vast majority of the situations with some very... Um, very specific exceptions where the operator mm, put a lot of effort into making the lender mad. Let me say that. <laughs> it took a lot of effort because most of these lenders, they don't want the properties back. They just want a performing loan. And as long as they can see a pathway to A, the borrower can continue to pay, 
even though it may be in, you know, it may be in the red light because of the debt service coverage ratio may be in questionable situation. If they see a way that the work, they're going to do that and then they're going to on the same side, if they see that, the, you know, two years from now, there's a way out, then the vast majority of them work a deal out because it's a whole lot easier to do that with the current owner than go in with a new ownership group and hope to get, especially if you have a seller who's fighting you <laughs> while they're doing it. I think it's, I mean, it's like the, the, in some cases, the perfect storm, you, you bought it at sub five cap and then your insurance tripled or quadrupled. And now you've got fixed costs that, that really you can't raise the rents high enough to even cover what's, what's going on. But if you're saying that's not happening. And maybe they, they, they they're just, basically not cash flow in the deals. I mean, they're just living with it. Like there's no money coming out of those things. They're just making the debt service. Just hold on and, and ride it out. That's a, um, that's another piece, but I mean, you're talking about uh, a lot of cases, the irreplaceable assets too, and irreplaceable locations, especially in Florida right now. A lot of these, a lot of these assets have been uncovered, and, and uh, I mean, it's it, the, the population growth, the the job growth, the uh, the income growth. I mean, sooner or later, it's going to catch up. Yeah, they're, they're all all of those are major tailwinds pushing the deals that everybody thinks you know in a couple in two years, three years, they'll be able to make it out of there. And we've seen massive attenuation in the growth of insurance costs. So insurance costs skyrocketed from 20, basically 2021, 2022, 2023. And now they're coming in for renewals now. And this is the first time we're seeing, you know, negative. They're coming back at give or take five to 7% actually pulling back on, on cost of insurance here in Florida. Got it. Are there still deals to be found in Florida? Everybody. Right. I got tons and tons and tons of buyers looking for deals that are, you know, distressed and all that stuff. Um, those are just, I am not finding them. I don't see them. I don't see them trading. Um, they are so far significantly over touted as far as I can tell in the space I'm in, but there are few deals. And when sellers do choose to take it to the market, especially at this time in the market, they are doing so for a specific reason that they're looking to accomplish and we're getting multiple bids on them and then we're able to execute at today's pricing where it's a good value for a buyer based on borrowing costs which right now are running in the high fives including current insurance costs and projected rent growth that is you know in the five percent range not 20 percent anymore it's got to buy it at the basis and let time take over and and uh have it but what are you underwriting i mean if you, you're underwriting uh, the 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 investment side too is it a 10-year hold five-year hold for the uh, oh that that okay so the whole period is that is that is completely buyer dependent yeah and asset dependent so we've got some plenty of buyers that we deal with i mean they're buying assets and their intention is to hold it for 20 plus years then we've got other ones who are looking for a three-year deal where they're like trying to get in increase their rents fix up the property and exit three years, either by a refi or by a sale. And that is very um, specific to the buyers that are choosing to go after those assets. And that affects how they think and what kind of offers they make. Got it. Uh, tell us about First some of the I, stuff. I just put a five year, you know, assume a five year exit because I don't know what they're going to do. But I've learned a long time ago, you can tell somebody all day long what the best thing is. And it really comes down to their situation and understanding what they want to accomplish versus what I want. Well, what kind of, uh, act, uh, you, you, you get a listing, you put it out there, you, you build the OM. What, what are you seeing as far as offers and then uh, as far as buying groups, what, what, what kind of feedback are you getting? So that's a, that's a, that is a good question. Uh, the typical time frame, we're like marketing it for probably 30 days. We'll do two sets of tours and then we'll have, you know, 10 to 12 offers from qualified buyers. We'll go to a best and final, give or take, usually a four of the top four of those. Are you still seeing Benny Wars and hard, uh, your EMD going hard? Is, is that still happening or? It, it, so that would be dependent upon the asset specifically. The yeah. better quality location, the more you see that happening and the less quality asset, the less you see that happening. Because it's more risk. And you, you know, about a C class deal, you know, there's just more operational risk. Less people are interested when they go there. They know it's going to be more operationally challenging. So you're going to see a lot less of people really willing to take on that risk. 
Now you take the opposite of that, like we traded a deal in College Park, which is an awesome location here in Central Florida. And there you had multiple bidders coming in and we ended up closing it actually above list price. So just, it's very asset dependent for that question because you also have different buyer pools who are interested in those types of assets, depending on their skill set and what they want to accomplish. Makes sense for sure. What uh, what strategies do you use to define the um, the sellers? Because ultimately, you, it's smart to use a broker. You've got an intermediary between the buyer and the seller, but the, as the uh, as the listing agent, you're using different strategies to reach out and find the sellers. What, what are what are some of those relationship based? So uh, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it is. So this is what I do. I make between 100 and 150 dials every single week to owners, specifically people who own buildings that I want to sell. We send out postcards to every single owner, no matter where they are. If they own a building in this market and it's a building that I want to sell, then they get a postcard from me every single month. They get an email from me every single week, sometimes two, depending on what we're going on. And then I reach out once a month to do value add informational webinars on different topics of operations, insurance, property management, how to best finance your deals, how to purchase deals, how to get them, to, how to add value to them based on exterior, interior renovations, how to sell them. Once a month, I send those out to each one of those and I've been doing that for 15 years. So it's nice. a lot of that. And that's that just goes back to doing what other people don't want to do. It's yeah. uh, cons consistently and showing up and doing what others won't. That's cool. What's yeah. been one of your coolest deals that you've ever uh, taken a listing on? Oh, I, that's a, I, who knows, man. Everybody's got their own opinion of what's a cool deal. Yeah. I, I recently sold a deal uh, that is 31 units in Orlando in a C-class area. And I sold that building now for the fifth time. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Years, that was my fifth time selling that building. I sold it. For the first gentleman, uh, Mr. Dunlap, I sold his older gentleman. He was retiring. I sold it to Jerry Mandel. And then that was for 400. And I sold that to Mike Daniel for 470,000. I sold it from him for 740,000. Sold it for him three years later for 1.1 million. Then I sold it for him two, one, two, three years later for 2.1 million. Then I sold it for her three years later for three million nine hundred and fifty thousand. Just to give you an idea. Wow, that, that just kind of shows you too that uh, where the pricing's gone. So that that's, that's the, the competitive advantage I have also in this marketplace because I've been doing this so long. I know so many of these buildings that someone will come call. You know, they'll somebody will buy a building that I didn't have any do it. I'll call them up and I'll ask them, "Did you fix unit number 17? because I know they had a leak underneath and the guy's like, how'd you know the set? And I'm like, well, I sold that building three years ago for so-and-so I toured it when this guy had it. So that's a unique advantage I have in this market because I just have done so many deals and been here for so long. Tell us about a, um, a deal that what an experience that you had that that was tough to get across the finish line, tough to get across to the closing table, but ultimately you brought the buyer, you brought the seller together and you made it all make sense. Um, I'm trying to find one that's easy. <laughs> you let me know when that happens. <laughs> I keep looking for it. <laughs> well, it's you have an unrealistic seller, unrealistic broker, unrealistic buyer, and uh, <laughs> and a terrible uh, property. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we're all supposed to win. <laughs> that's uh, we're we're going through one right now. That's why I'm asking. Like, how how did the broker is essential gluing together? with uh, either band-aids or duct tape the deal to make it work to make everyone happy and somehow to make everyone win and it's uh i do not envy at all with, with uh, your all's position I'll, I'll give you, so this deal i actually closed a couple of weeks ago i was pretty happy with it um i the we had under contract everything was moving forward we were heading toward closing we had a couple of weeks before closing and the seller this is not the buyer the seller calls me and says hey man we got a big problem i was like oh what's up you know how come it's like I need to cancel the contract. I'm sending a cancellation. It's like, so, huh? Say so what? <laughs> Just like that. Yep. So what the situation was after I asked, well, what's going on? What can we like, what's the situation? Let's see if we can find a solution. There was a tax issue that was uh, the surprise. 
So I actually went through a learning curve for the next 10 days. I learned about every kind of tax minimization strategy uh, to save this seller a bunch of money on their taxes and was able to put together some nice strategies uh, with the help of a couple of firms that specialize in tax minimization to minimize those tax strategies and end up saving the deal and saving the seller. I mean, probably in this case, about a million dollars in taxes. It's at 1031 or it's at seller finance. There's a whole lot of mixture of those things. So you've got one thing is you, most people have heard of a DST, a Delaware statutory trust, which is one of the things you can roll into through a, a tax deferred exchange, a 1031 exchange. Another one is a DST, a deferred sales trust, where you actually move the money into a trust that is not controlled by the seller and does not take um I forgot the exact terminology, but basically they don't take control or receipt of the asset. The good money goes into a third party trust and is held in trust with them. So the taxes are not due until they actually get receipt of it, where and you're able to defer that out to up to 30 years. Oh, wow. Another thing is in regards to, of course, where you just mentioned sale, where you do a, a installment sale or seller financing, where you defer the sale again until you receive the income or actually receive the proceeds. Uh, another one is you can actually invest in specific types of oil and gas wells, which I know this has to do with real estate, you know, multifamily, but specific types of oil and gas wells have incredible depreciation treatment. So you invest a million dollars into oil and gas wells, depending on the exact structure, and you get 800 or so thousand dollars of tax, immediate tax relief, the year of purchase. So there's a ton of interesting structures you can go through. So if you ever run into a situation where you're having a tax problem, um, I'm happy to share with you who the people I talk to and, and, and get you some referrals to experts in that space. These are tax attorneys and, and CPAs that specialize specifically in tax minimization. That's cool. Yeah, it, not engineering the sale. Minimization and not <laughs> tax avoidance. <laughs> no tax avoidance, only minimization. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're engineering the sale to make it to where it's you're hedging against giving giving you can use that capital to create employment employment or create an opportunity somewhere else i mean it's just a good use of funds it's the highest and best use and uh you gotta you've got to be methodical about it so that's that's uh but you were able to save the deal based on going a mile deep and and connecting the the buyer with somebody an expert uh, resident expert in that, that field and you glued it together made it made it happen that's huge that's what that's the magic of brokers too is that they step in when things are are three feet from gold and everyone's giving up and you, you get it to the finish line uh, so that's both real estate brokers buyers and sellers agents real estate brokers it is also the situation for good mortgage brokers and now a lot of people want to skip mortgage brokers because, ah, what do I need to pay this to do the fee just to make sure good mortgage brokers are way more valuable than the fee you pay them based on yeah. the time they save you and the terms they're able to negotiate for you. Yeah. So they will no. be able to come up with creative solutions like that at the lot that you did not expect. And they'll get the deal done. I mean, where other, they just got a, a basket full of resources to be able to get these, because not all banks want that asset on their books. So they mm -hmm. know which ones to, to go towards and which ones are, are looking for those type of assets and, and can get it done quick. Um, and they, if they know you, they know the, uh, they know the, uh, the financial uh, background, they can send them exactly what they need and uh, it works out. Um, very cool. So what's the horizon look like in Florida with, uh, with your firm? So we're, we're growing, actually expanding right now. Uh, we've gone through a contraction based on 2022, 2023, slower markets. All economic indicators currently are looking as a nice expansion running starting probably Q1 to Q2 2025 and running clear through 2028, depending on the exact expansion of it. It's going to depend on interest rates and some other things, but there is a ton of tailwinds pushing the Florida markets. And as this supply works its way through, if you look following that, so this would be 2025, 2026 and 2027 deliveries are going to be some of the lowest we've had in 30 years, meaning that there's going to be rent appreciation and price appreciation, barring some huge anomaly. So we're planning to capture as much of that market as we can. 
And in the real estate brokerage business or in the real estate business period, you go through cycles. Anyone who's been doing this a long time knows that this is part of the business, specifically yeah. in the investment space. You hit, get hit harder when things go bad and you make more money when things go good. But there is a unique opportunity when you have an inflection point where you're moving back up on pricing, where you're able, the people who are survivors who've been there and have been building those relationships, talking to people when things turn, they can turn quickly and you can capture a ton of market share during that up swing. Have you seen outside of commercial real estate, multifamily, have you seen any other uh, assets being distressed like second homes or uh, Airbnbs in Florida? People that went and bought their second and third uh, home. Office buildings. Office. That's number one. Are you seeing a, uh, a, a conversion on a runway for offices or is it pretty much what do we do with these things besides tear them down? That, so there's a whole lot of talk about, oh, you just convert them to apartments. It, with some, ex, except there are some office buildings that could be relatively converted. The vast majority of them, I, I, that is going to be very difficult and extremely expensive to do. And a whole lot of people just think, ah, you can just go put a bathroom in there. It, like, go run some numbers. And it, Matt quickly will tell you. I mean, there's like two hours of back in a napkin calculation. And you'll be like, uh, we're just cheaper to demolish the building. And I, I hope they're going to, I mean, honestly, I do not know. I was, I'm just glad I don't own a bunch of office buildings. Are these older offices where like return to office doesn't even matter to these buildings? Uh, if you run around downtown, most of the downtowns is in downtown Orlando is a, I mean, the foot traffic is down like 40%. So we've got 60% of the people running around downtown at any given time than there were, than it was in 2019. And what do you think is causing that? Just this to all the retail that's downtown. There's just people are going back to the. I mean, as much as we were at tout, everybody has to go back to the office. People just aren't doing that. Yeah. And even if they are, they're doing it two days a week, three days a week. Interesting. What do you, do you think? There's going to be a comeback, or is it just a shift and total shift in the job market? Uh, my, uh, I checked out my, hang on, let me check my crystal ball here. <laughs> Magic eight ball says. <laughs> the, the eight ball crystal ball. <laughs> yeah, Magic eight ball says uh, if you're, if you're anticipating all your employees to come drive to downtown every single day, I, I don't yeah. think that look is not good. Yeah, I agree. We shall see for sure. Um, Joe, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, learn more about yourself, uh, call you up, see what inventory is out there. How can they reach out? It's extremely difficult to find me. Definitely don't go to this website right here. <laughs> Just well, 100 units.com, 100units.com. Or you can shoot me an email, Joe, J O E, at 100units.com. Those are two easiest ways to get a hold of me. Happy to help with anything in the Central Florida space. If you're looking at deals in Central Florida and just want to somebody who's been around here a long time, give you a quick idea on it. I share. I'm happy to do that anytime. If you need any resource, we have an entire resources tab there just for multifamily. That's all specific vendors for multifamily space. And if you're looking at deals in Central Florida and just want to, hey, what's give me an idea on this deal. I'm happy to look at any of the deals. Like no matter what, if it's we have it or somebody else does, I probably know it. I can tell you about the area. I can tell you what kind of what's on around it. I'm happy to share anytime. Awesome. Joe, we certainly appreciate your time and your expertise, and we will talk soon. Sweet. Awesome. Josh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate yes, it.